In honor of His Royal Highness, the King of Sweden, we play a march to honor him. That's a pretty cool march. I'm liking this. Where is the king, by the way? There he is. Oh, the real thing to be honored. This amazing Swedish engineered model 6020. Oh, yeah. That's what this march is really for. I'm sorry, Your Highness. But this is the picture of majesty. All right, let's do some sewing, shall we? All right, let's come back the other way with a zigzag. Almost like a 21 gun salute. Here we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's befitting of a royal march. Oh yeah, I'm liking the way that looks. Well, wouldn't we be remiss, considering that that was in fact the U.S. Army band playing that march, if we didn't do some U.S. Army grade canvas? Now, we're starting with just two layers. You can see that right there. We're going to go ahead and fold it once. That gets us up to four layers. And we're going to fold it one more time to get us up to eight layers of this stuff. Let me try to pinch it together. Can you see that? You know, the last Swedish beauty that I introduced on this workbench was the 6030 that sold in about 48 hours. So this one being available for sale, I would suggest you move quickly because what we're about to do right now is eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. I'm going to go ahead and slide it underneath the presser foot and see if we can't rattle down. But we're going to do it backwards this time. We're going to do a zigzag going down and a straight stitch coming back. But you know what? I need a little bit of marching music in order to do this. All right, what shall we play? Ceremonial medley sounds kind of interesting. Let's see what that is. Oh yeah, I'm liking this. And to be fair to all branches of service, this particular march is being played by the United States Marine Corps Band. All right, let's see how this machine does with eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. Here we go. Zigzag to start, straight stitch coming back. Here we go. Oh, if it could be a challenge. Huh? Look at that. <laughs> Crazy. 
it's got to be that the United States Marine Corps band is playing. Because I think that was even easier than when the Army band played. And for any of you that have ever been to the, the United States Military Academy at West Point, where I had the privilege of serving for three years, you can hear great music like this at Trophy Point regularly through the year. And is it neat with the Hudson Valley and the Hudson River just in the background. Okay, let's go back with a straight stitch. Here we go. And I'm not going to hold anything back. This Swedish Beauty has a one amp motor. Let me tell you one thing. It loves sewing heavy grade. Here we go. Ha ha! Or as the Marines say, hoo Actually, it's hoorah, but I'm an Army guy. Well, folks, eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas, zigzag, straight stitch, doesn't get any more perfect than that. And you know what? A lot of you know that have been following me for a long time. I was raised by mom and dad who were both United States Marines. So while this is about a Swedish beauty, a Model 6020, I'm also going to honor them through this song as well. And any other Marines that are out there. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and zip down and do some decorative stitching now with this incredible Swedish beauty. And I got to do it. Oorah! All right, I'm going to do some changes on the other side. Let me show you what I'm doing. We're going to start with a blue stitch, and I have Cam D in the back of this machine right now. All right, so we're going to do stitches on Cam D, which is this one all the way, where am I? All the way over here. So we're going to do the blue stitch, the yellow stitch, the red stitch, and finally the green stitch. All right, you ready? We're going to do the settings only one time, and then I'll change them off camera. So all we do with this color Colormatic is we change all of them to the blue setting. All right, so we'll do the first, the stitch selector. And I always forget which way I'm turning it. Yeah, I went the wrong way. You know what? We just had Memorial Day. We have the 4th of July coming up. I love marching music. I don't know if you do, but I'll tell you one thing. This is fantastic. All right, let's do the blue stitch first. Hopefully I've got everything set just right. Because we've got the United States Marine Corps band playing and I don't want to screw it up. All right, let's get over to the needle and get this done. And perfect timing. My music stopped. You know what? I don't plan this. I could not be that calculated. So let's see if I can put on Another March song. Let's see. Ceremonial Melody is what we just played. Let's try Regimental Pride March. And this is also by the United States Marine Corps Band. Oh, that's cool. I feel like we've gone back in time. Yeah. All right, here we go. I'm not going to go all the way down, folks. That is spectacular. Oh my gosh, I love that stitch. 
Don't you? All right. Let me go ahead and give this a clip and we'll buzz down a couple other ones before I run out of music again. All right, so that was our blue stitch. This machine is going to come with four cams, A, B, C, D, and we have cam D in the back of the machine right now. And as big as that stitch is, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get more than like one more down. Probably can. All right, so now we're going to do the yellow stitch. So off camera, I'm changing our stitch settings to yellow. Only had to change one, which is really cool. All right, here we go. I made that one way too small. Oh my lord. All right, let's do a different one. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you can see what I did is I made it way too narrow. That's why it would help once in a while to read the directions. You know that? It just would. All right, let's do... I'll do a red stitch. Hopefully I don't goof this one up too. All right, red stitch. Red, 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 red. All right, let's see what we get on this one. Well, it just goes to show you, especially when you're on camera, you don't always get it right. There's a beautiful scallop style stitch. I love the look of that one. Any other military people just tapping your foot as you're listening to this marching music? Gosh, I hope so. All right, so we just did the red stitch. It was this one right here, this scallop looking one, which I think is spectacular. Although I still, this is still my favorite right here. Definitely my favorite. All right, why don't I try to do one more? I'll try to do the green one real quick and I hopefully don't goof this one up. And I'm gonna join up with that other one that I didn't do so well on. So here goes the green stitch. Let me see if I can line this one up. That's green, 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 here we go. Before I run out of music that is. Well, I guess I spoke too soon. There it went. I'm actually glad the music kind of stopped, though, because that does give you an opportunity to listen to how beautiful this machine runs and to hopefully forget how I totally botched the yellow stitch by not setting the stitch length correctly. It just goes to show you, man, I mean, you can, you can try to get everything just right and you can still goof up. But those are three of the four stitches on Cam D, which I think are absolutely spectacular. I don't know what you think, but I'll tell you one thing. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. The stitch quality, the consistency, the lay down of that stitch, it just doesn't get any better than that. And you know what, you already saw what it could do with two layers of uh, heavy grade uh, genuine cowhide and it, it just did a drop dead spectacular job on that. I'm gonna try to bring that one up a little bit so you can see them in the camera. So this is the one that we kind of opened with. Remember this one? We did a zigzag and a straight stitch. Again, showing you from the side, we went through two layers of genuine cowhide but when you fold it like this again, it's got that pucker effect and you're going to get more than two layers. You just will. It's super uh, heavy grade stuff and very difficult to get through. But you know what? Let's talk real heavy duty. I'm going to set these to the side on the end of this beautiful extension bed. 
you remember this, the phone book? <laughs> For lack of a better description, we did eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas and the stitch quality, the stitch formation, is, it just doesn't get any better than that. It's absolutely spectacular and spot on. And I can turn it and show you that lock stitch, which is just going to be as amazing as that top stitch. Just absolutely drop dead gorgeous. So you know what? You've seen this machine so now let me just do a couple of measurements on it to give you a, a real appreciation for the bed size of this. Like I referred to the other uh, machine, the 6030, that I sold within about 48 hours. Um, it's going to be heading to Canada. Co had a couple of people reach out, ask if it was still uh, available. I said, unfortunately, uh, it's not. Uh, there's a, a gentleman in Canada that you know saw it, fell in love with it, and it's gone. So don't make the same mistake on this 6020 by waiting too long. Uh, it's available now. I can't say five minutes from now, <laughs> honestly. But again, when you're looking at a machine like this, you have a lot of hardcore quilters out there now. I've got a number of them in my network now that I'm up in the Ocanto area. And they will bring to me their contemporary uh, Viking Husqvarna's, their Faw Fafs, their uh, Elna's, and they'll talk about it being a long arm. Well, you know what? When you're talking about a machine like this, with the overall bed length, let me turn it like this, we'll do it in inches. Uh, the overall bed length being over 15 inches. And we're talking about from the pillar to the needle eight inches uh, and you know what you can already see the clearance the space here in the harp area vertically you can see uh, from end to end it's just an absolute long arm Swedish beauty is what I would refer to it as and we might as well do it from the, the back to the front as well because you know that's gonna that's gonna impact your turning almost nine inches from the back to the front on this bed and again if you don't want to use the bed you can easily remove it and you can have access to a free arm as well or you can access your bobbin if you're needing to change out thread uh, also and then just as easily uh, slide it back into position again I hope it's easy to get it on because it normally is and there we just locked it into place again. I'm kind of moving my entire surface there. But this is absolutely a spectacular Swedish engineered machine. Um, I can't say enough when it comes to Swedish beauties. But this one in particular I like as well. Because one of the things that I'll point out about it is it also has what I would say is significant integrity when it comes to the fact that it does need oiling. You remember the last one that we that I presented, the 6030, it had no oiling points across the top. As we look at this Swedish Beauty, uh, you can see that this being the model just before, they've got an oiling point here, oiling point here, and then they also, out of view, have an oiling point on the rear of the machine as well that's going to feed uh, the different uh, moving parts uh, in the faceplate area. So, uh, and obviously there's a ton more lubrication points if you service the machine properly. Also, I didn't demonstrate it, but this is also going to have that slow gear and the auto disengagement of the clutch. To engage that slow gear, all you're going to do is pull this bobbin winder out, and you can slow, uh, you can sew and slow gear, which reduces the motor by one, uh, all the way down to one fifth the normal speed. That it would sew and then by just pushing it back in you're back to full steam ahead again and again to disengage the clutch all you do is pop a bobbin on there it, it could it be any easier than that i doubt it and um, threading this machine as i showed on the 6030 is going to be just as easy we come uh, across the top here we see uh, there's a thread guide in the back where the thread snaps in so that it doesn't pop out on you we then come through the tension discs, which are right here next to that knob for upper tension. That's, that's our upper tension knob right there. 
we drop down to this uh, take up right here which is also going to be your tensioning spring we then come back up to your take up arm you can actually go I, I would recommend going through the lower one I get that I get that question often uh, you're going to be using both of them if you do dual needle or twin needle sewing so go ahead and just thread it through that bottom one you're then, then, then going to come through blah 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 through this uh, thread guide, down through this thread guide right here, and then ultimately thread this machine from front to back. And again, look at those feed dogs. I mean, they are incredibly uh, robust when it comes to feeding that material. You saw it on the sew-offs. And again, when it comes to the different controls over here, right above this really cool branding mark here with uh, the model 6020 part of the 6000 series colormatic you've got this lower knob here which is going to control your stitch width and it's also going to give you access to some auto button holding if you if you'd like to have that uh, up here is your uh, stitch length and also your reverse button in the middle and then it's also going to give you the opportunity to do some settings as well uh, for buttonholes to the left is your stitch selector it's going to give you access to pretty much anything that this machine can do which is a lot considering I'm including uh, four cams a B C and D so we only showed cam D and again I botched the yellow stitch so block that out of your memory <laughs> totally block it out of your memory but we sewed the other three and again as we move towards the needle you'll see those again also included is going to be cam c and you know what i probably should have picked cam c because i think those are absolutely drop dead gorgeous uh decorative stitches cam b is right there which also has some real cool stitches as well and finally cam a so all of those stitches a b c d including the yellow stitch if you set the stitch length correctly uh, are going to be stitches that this machine can generate and if we move over, come out a little bit because my camera is acting really wonky, as some of you know. We can look again at the stitches that we just did on camera. Again, I don't goof around like some folks when they're promoting a machine where they'll show you still shots with stitches that that machine may or may not have done. You just saw it live on camera. U.S. Army grade canvas um, with uh, eight layers. You saw a zigzag, you saw a straight stitch, absolutely perfect stitches. You saw the two layers of this uh, genuine cowhide. Again, the straight stitch and the zigzag, absolutely perfect stitches. We then went to a single layer of genuine cowhide, and you saw the three stitches demonstrated perfectly. And then you saw this one botched attempt to do the yellow stitch. But again... I want you to forget that. Block it out of your memory because everything else I did perfectly. <laughs> I can't help it, folks. I'm not perfect when I do stitch offs. I goof up sometimes, as you just saw. But thank goodness this machine got it right. It only it's it's garbage in, garbage out. It's only gonna do what I tell it to do. I did perfectly here. I did perfectly here. Again, look at it from the side. Holy mackerel. And then I did perfectly with these three. I goofed up once. So I've got a pretty good percentage delivery here, folks. And maybe I was just distracted by the incredible marching music put out by the U.S. Army uh, Band and the United States Marine Corps Band. But you know what? Don't be fooled by one, by one goof up because this machine is all about perfection more so than me when it comes to my delivery sometimes by the time i get done putting close to 16 hours in a machine like this it's going to deliver absolute perfection as long as you set the stitches correctly if you mess up like me then it doesn't matter it's not going to turn out right you know it's just like the rock you know when the rock was using this Yuki machine if he set the stitches correctly then you're going to get a great outcome if he didn't do it correctly 
then you're going to probably see a look like this on his face where he's going, oh, I screwed up, instead of this kind of semi-somber look with the sweat on his forehead of saying, yeah, I'm going to get this done. So, at any rate, you guys know me. I like to have fun. And this machine can be really serious. It can also deliver a lot of fun in the sew-offs as well that you're going to do once you get it into your home. And you're going to be able to, to, to deliver stitches like this that are absolute perfection. So, you know what? Reach out right away if you have an interest in this machine. This Swedish Beauty. I'm trying to pick out a song right now is why I sound a little bit distracted. All right. So I got to end this with another march, right? That was my water bottle, which isn't quite marching. So what could be a better way to zoom out than on the United States Military Academy crest, my US Army go strong thing and all my other stuff over there. But this is not about that, your majesty. This is about the Husqvarna Vikings 6020 that is for sale. Yes, your highness. You made another good one with this spectacular Swedish beauty. This is a longer march than I realized. Maybe I'll just have to fade out on the Viking Husqvarna, huh? Oh, why not? We're here anyway, right? We might as well zoom around a little bit more. Give you a closer look at this Swedish beauty. And the faceplate opens on this too, which the 6030 does not. I like this. And look at the clearance underneath the presser foot. That is something. Isn't it? And of course it ended as I was panning around, but that's okay, because we're going to end it right there. All right, again, this 6020 is for sale. One amp motor, absolutely brute force but also has that delicate decorative side and a huge long arm quilting bed for all of you that are hardcore quilters and just love a lot of workspace. All right, so God bless you guys. Stay tuned for other great videos like this one.